Hello and welcome to another beautiful session. Today I'll be doing three sessions of 20 minutes. I'll be painting this beautiful landscape, abstract landscape, and I'll be focusing more on this beautiful video from above. That's why we have so many wires, the microphone. I'm usually, I'm actually using this microphone for the camera and uh, for that camera. And uh, we're gonna do three sessions with two minutes in between 20 minute sessions. Pomodoro session, and I'm going to have some beautiful paint water to drink. Ah. Mm. It's uh, always, whenever you drink paint water, you become a better painter. Much easier to do it that way. 20 minutes, starting now. Hello and welcome to another beautiful painting session. Today we will be doing a beautiful abstract landscape. And you will need some paints. This is acrylic paint, white, titanium white, made by Amsterdam Acrylic Paints. This is Azo Yellow Medium. You can also use lemon yellow or any other kind of yellow you have around. This is burnt umber, also known as brown. Carmine red. This is carmine red. It plays very well with the yellows and the blues, making very deep purples. And this is brilliant blue. We are using a restricted palette because this way you are going to really understand how colors play together and it's much easier to be a bit limited by the color palette. And you will need a canvas. This is 30 by 40 centimeter canvas. You will need a plate to put your beautiful. You will also need a plate to mix the colors. You will need a brush. Let's do that again. For this course, you will need some acrylic paints. We will be, <clears throat> in this course, we will be doing, in this course, we will be doing a beautiful abstract landscape, very nice and beautiful with some blue and some yellow, but you will need some acrylic paint. I suggest taking big jugs like this. Amsterdam acrylic paint is such a nice acrylic. This is titanium white. This is Azo Yellow Medium. You can also use lemon yellow or any other kind of yellow you have around. This is Burnt Umber, also known as brown. Some Carmine Red. Carmine Red is a very good red because it plays very well with the blue. It doesn't make it muddy. It makes it much more of a deep purple. And this is Brilliant Blue. You will... <coughs> You will also need a canvas. This is a 30 by 40 centimeter canvas. You will need a mixing plate, some water, some paper towels, as well as some brushes, a big flat brush. We will do a lot of the painting with this brush and then a small flat brush and a round small brush. And that's almost all you need for this course. Before we start the first step, you should know that this painting requires a bit of courage. It will have a certain amount of time. It won't look like anything. It will look just like an abstract painting, but by the end of it, you're gonna really understand how to build up layers and how to create depth as well as colors and of course, the whole entire painting. For that, you will need to start with some blue for the sky. A little bit of yellow. And some white.
with the big flat brush. It has a bit of water in it. Take about half of the white and a bit of blue. Mix it well together. Well, let's take a bit more blue and a bit more white because I couldn't pick up. Let's blend it smoothly together to get this sur surreal color, this beautiful baby blue. Such a beautiful color. And let's establish our horizon line. Well, it is going, the horizon line is going to be a bit lower, but we're going to try to make a beautiful line. A very interesting way of measuring is by going with another brush, just like that. And it's a bit lower. And I'm, I'm going to need to also look from above. Okay. And now that we've set the line, we need to set, and now that we've set the line, we need to set a middle line as well. Okay. A bit too high. And let's go ahead and start making these beautiful lines going up. Let's start on this corner and beautifully add this color softly and maybe break it a bit. Go on this corner just to trick our mind to not focus too much on the brush marks. Use the big brush so you can have beautiful, fast paintings. You don't have to use small brushes. Most beginners usually use too small of a brush and they end up spending hours and hours on a painting. Let's go in the middle over here and create a bit of depth. You create depth by making small little lines like this, not a lot, just a few, and then big, making bigger marks as you go further. And let's define a bit of a cloud in this area and make it like that. Maybe it comes around just over here and it loops like that. Okay. And let's actually make it a bit bigger. I'm just focusing a bit on the edge. Like notice how here it's such a beautiful edge and then here it's too jagged, like Mick Jagger. And now over on this area, we need some more interesting edges. Edges are very important in painting. And of course, this is not really a cloud, it's a banana, so no more banana looking clouds. Let's continue like this and make a beautiful splotch. Now this will be another cloud just over here. It's a bit of a hairy cloud. So let's focus on that edge and make it a bit lower over here and maybe add some interesting things. The closer things are to you, the bigger the shapes. Of course, this is not always true. And usually clouds have Usually clouds have this interesting fluffy top and this flat, depending on the clouds, of course, and this flat underside. Let's leave the area like that. You can also brush the paint a bit down just so it creates a bit more of an interesting and beautiful look. And you can also brush it again just so there is a few more interesting textures there's happen happening on the wonderful sky. Getting more blue. And let's add a bit of red. 
just so we can create a wonderful purple. So taking some of this red, maybe too much. I think it's enough, it's fine. Mix it well, because you have a lot of paint in the brush, so you need to be mixing it very well. And now let's make some mountains in the distance. Just start with a beautiful line, purposefully lower and leave the white band over here so you can add the bottom of the sky later because then you can also edit the mountains. The mountains will be very small and they are very Try to, let's actually use the smaller flat brush because whenever you want to have, whenever you want to have more control, you can change to a different brush. These are the shapes of the mountains. You can make like pyramids, triangles, or you can go a bit more crazy in a staircase try to vary them and make them as interesting as possible because mountains are not like this all the time, like beautiful triangles. You need to make some variations. Be careful on the edge, try to make it as nice as possible so you don't have to repaint it later. Let's go with another beautiful line from here to there and control these mountains shapes. You can also use the corner of the brush to get more interesting looking mountains and then going and filling them in, maybe connecting some of them and go slower because you don't really need to go very fast whenever you have a brush that is that is a bit bigger than you need. Notice how these three look the same. Let's break that up by making this one a bit bigger and more tall. Let's go like that maybe like this. Don't focus on the bottom edge because you're gonna use another color on top of that. Okay, some mountains in the distance. And now let's paint the bottom of the mountains a bit just to lose some of that color that you have in the brush. Just brush it like that. Okay. And now let's go a bit darker by adding some brown. And with the small brush, let's go and take some red and some blue, making this beautiful purple. Since you already have this beautiful purple, you might as well just use it. This time you're gonna cut like some shadows underneath the wonderful mountains. You can raise them up a bit. You can do a lot of things to create some more interesting stuff. Don't make them like this, just a line. Try to vary the line a bit and add some weight, some texture, not too much texture, but just a little bit of weight. Maybe make a bigger one over on this side. And now let's go a bit lower just to make it a bit more interesting. And then over here, 
Maybe these are some hills or some shadows or something like that. Okay, and another smaller one here. Sorry, sometimes I just end up making things without talking, but yeah. And now you can add another beautiful line just here. Take some brown, add it over the purple, just to make it even darker and add it in some areas to better accentuate this shadow. Maybe clean up some of this edge. Okay, <clears throat> let's clean up the brush and go back to some blue to make the wonderful underside of the sky now that it's a bit more dry. It doesn't need to be dry. You need some red, a tiny bit of red, some blue. Mix in a bit more red and then take some white to make that color a bit more interesting. It's going to be a bit grayer just so it adds more variety in the sky. It adds more color variety because color variety is actually the secret sauce of painting. If you put paint, if you put just paint from the tube or only two colors together, it's not really that beautiful. And now with the brush the other way, we need to focus on creating and making these edges even better. Notice how you need to Really be careful about not going into the blue, below or above too much and go slower so you have more control. I'm going to go like this so you can see. And barely touching the edge, doing a centimeter or two and then going and editing some of those edges. You don't need to focus on making them perfect because it's okay if they blend a bit because things in the far things that are far away tend to have softer edges that's another way to create depth i think this purple is way too dark we need to make it lighter so take some white add some white and then start right where you left off. You can go back a bit. Now it's better. I think it needs even more white. Let's find another clean area to add more white to this grayish purple. And you can go back inside the shape and continuing, but this adds more color variety because you are now creating more textures and things that are blending together. The two, three colors you've blended are now playing together. These are analogous colors, so they are very friend friendly to each other. If they blend into each other, they are not going to fight over who's the boss. And trying to edit that shape. Notice how this area is too calm. Let's add a bit of another ridge. And over here. Because you've added this color onto the beautiful bottom of the sky, just so we balance out the whole composition. This is how you create compositional balance. You need to take some of this color and add it in the sky. So take it and just brush it over the blue. The blue is a bit wet still. You can go like this as well. Just blend it a bit into the sky. Not too much, just a few touches here and there. So here, Notice how they are a bit more 
vertical just because it creates a bit more of a, an interesting look. And here, maybe they push towards the other cloud. Perfect. Now let's make a cloud here. And as you blend the color, if the blue is still wet, it will pick up a bit more of the color. So you can go a bit and take more color to add some of this grayish tone over the top. Making some more marks on the left side. And I have a bit of a white spot over here and over here. And that's all for this step. And that is all for this step. And you don't need to let it dry. We're just going to go into another step. And there you go, the first session is over. I'm gonna set a timer for one minute and 40 seconds because I took about 20 seconds to finish the actual step. One minute 45, so basically two minutes starting now. It's becoming quite nice. I've painted a beautiful sky and now I'm gonna focus on the lower area of the painting. I'm having a lot of fun creating this painting and noticing all the small little detail details and also the colors it's very fun to play around with colors and also I'm having a laptop do some work in the background and doing some redundancy audio on the MacBook as well as on this microphone. So I have the audio in case something happens. I do not have video redundancy, but that's fine. Usually about 5% of the courses end up with corrupted files or something happens like the camera overheats and shuts down and I lose a few minutes, but that's fine. But sometimes it's out of focus. I don't set the focus right. And this is what happened in the beginning of the session. I didn't set the focus right. So I had to redo a bit of a, not the painting, but the materials. Thank goodness. Just about nine seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And let's set a timer for another 20 minutes. Twenty minutes starting now. For this step, you're going to basically use the same colors, but you will need to clean up the brush a bit. The big, big brush, you do that by swirling into the water to get the paint out, dabbing a bit, being careful not to spill some of this water paint onto the canvas. I intentionally did that. You can do it as well just to have a bit of a wash and to make it easier for yourself to paint and clean the brush. Okay, once you do that, you are going to need to take some yellow just on the corner. Look at how small it is. Take some yellow to make a bit of a turquoise. You are basically creating a bridge of colors from the sky colors to uh, more different type of color palette. So you first need some of this turquoise, this yellow turquoise. You can go a bit more textured with the big brush this time because you're just having a bit of fun. You can also take some of this turquoise, whiten. It basically is white and blue to add some of this color over here and 
let's add a beautiful, think of this as a line, just connecting and making a parallel between the sky and the, and the ground. Let's take some of this purple, white. If you don't have it, it's easy to make. You just add blue, white, and a bit of red, a lot of white actually. This just adds a bit of color variety. Let's take some of that white blue and add it over here. Trying to blend the colors, you should do as well. And make this line. Notice how flat it is on the top. So let's make it a bit more interesting. Okay. And now let's take some more blue and some more yellow, maybe a touch more blue, just to make a beautiful turquoise and some white to make this turquoise a bit more, a tiny bit more dark than this one. Okay. Just dabbing a bit of color in between the lines and over this to create a bit more depth, color contrast to make them just a bit more interesting. This is not a seaside, but we are building that bridge where maybe there is some a lake or something in the background. Let's take some more white and add it over. Things in the distance tend to be a bit more foggy, a bit more light. So you can accentuate that by going and adding a bit more white. Notice how it's very important to try to keep the things that you've painted so you don't have to go over them again or lose something. But you don't have to really pay that much attention. Let's build some texture over here. And on this side, just cleaning up the brush. This is all I'm doing right now, cleaning up the brush over this area, taking some more of that purple just to add a bit of contrast. And as soon as you do that, you can also take some yellow, put it over here, some brown, and a touch of red, not too much. Make this beautiful green earthy tone. It's going to blend together quite well with the um, blue that you put in the turquoise because it's a mix between the blue and you also have a lot of blue in the brush so that makes the colors really more interesting and blending together is a breeze take some water this is going to be a very runny type of wash and start thinking and covering almost all of the canvas that has splotches of white and it doesn't have the turquoise blue. Take some more of the paint, add it haphazardly. If it creates, the goal is to go over the areas that don't have very thick paint and have small little white points like this. And you can also think about edges like you did with the mountains. You can think of about edges this on this side as well. You can make some of them soft, some of them harsh, like right over here. I'm making them a bit harsher on this side, on the left side, and then blending the other side. Going outside of the canvas, painting this beautiful corner, loose and fast creates a bit more abstract painting. This layer is basically for covering up the whole canvas. You shouldn't cover it all. You need to change a bit the colors before you cover it all completely because you now built a little bit more of the bridge so you can go a bit more towards the green earthy tones. Let's take some red, just a tiny bit of red and some yellow, mix it over the paint that you already have here. This will make it 
a lot more interesting. Another beautiful green. It's creating green because there is a lot of blue in the brush. And notice how beautiful this sits on top of this color and also blends with the turquoise. It brings it down a notch. Some water goes a long way to just do a bit of a wash. And it also lubricates the brush to be able to glide. You can go closer. So notice how big these brush marks are. And the more you go towards the horizon line, which is over here, you need to go a bit smaller. If you really need it, you can use the smaller flat brush. I don't recommend it though, because whenever you use a smaller brush, you tend to stick around with it for the whole painting. So do the majority of the painting with the big brush so that you understand that the br big brush can do small things as well. And finishing up this area, there is a lot of white in here, but I don't mind it that much. Let's blend it a bit. And just because we have yellow so close, let's add a bit more yellow, this time just yellow, to make it a lot more green and saturated. And the more you blend over the areas, the paint becomes polluted. The more you blend over the areas, the paint becomes polluted. I cannot say that word. <laughs> but I'm going to leave it in because it's a, you understand the concept. It becomes, it takes some of the paint off of the canvas and then it creates that thing that we were talking about earlier, which is color variety. Okay. And now let's go the opposite way, take some red and some yellow and make it a bit more orange. Notice how immediate it is. With this color, you might as well just stick around in the greens because they tend to go better with the, with this color. But if you go over the blue, nothing happens. It just creates chalky colors. So basically, chalky colors are... They have too much cold colors in them and not enough to be a blue or a purple or something like that. And muddy colors are too brown, too red, actually, too, too, too warm and not warm enough to be a disting distinguishing them. And as you go towards the horizon line, you can start to edit slowly these shapes. Notice how easy it is to just give some lines, make some lines over there, over here, and just create this beautiful greenery. Okay. Now for the next step, you will need to let this dry completely and have a cleaner brush, maybe the medium brush, the small flat brush, because Let's actually clean it right now because you're going to work on to the clouds. You're going to make the clouds. And also with those colors, you're going to add them in the over the green. So the problem is not really the, the blue of the sky, which is majority lila. The problem is not the blue of the sky. The problem is the green because you're going to enter with the brush onto the green. So you're going to pick up some of that green. So that's why you need to let it dry. We let dry, we let the paintings dry. Usually whenever we change to a different color on the color wheel, a very far away color, this way you create color contrast. And uh, you also do it in order to really create a lot of contrast, even if you have the same colors like harmonious analogous colors but you want to create sharp edges and also a lot of contrast so you want to jump from a very dark color to a very light color without them blending together you need to wait for them to dry okay 
let's let this paint painting dry. If you have a hair dryer, you can dry it very fast in a few minutes. So I recommend just taking the hair dryer from the cupboard or wherever you keep it and blow drying it very fast so you can paint faster.
And there you go, the beautiful timer is over. I'm gonna set a beautiful break for two minutes. This time I'm actually gonna take a two minute break. I got some beautiful vitamin water. And starting now two minutes, I was getting some messages. And the painting is going quite nicely. I need to talk about the fact that I should, they shouldn't be worried if they, if it doesn't look that well right now. This is just the beginning of the painting. So yeah, just gonna finish it in the next 40 minutes since this is the first session. No, it's the second session. Oh no. <laughs> the second session so it's going to be the third session now which means i need to do uh, another video off stream off video <laughs> film the rest of the painting off when i'm not filming with this camera because i promised you three sessions not four <laughs> and uh, yeah I should be also meditating today. I need to still meditate two hours, but I think that this is more important than the 30 day meditation challenge for now. And it requires more of my attention. So basically I am rested, I can work, I can do a lot of painting, I can make a lot of courses. The meditation can be done in the end of the day, at the end of the day. So, because it doesn't require me to do anything. And that's what meditation is, just sitting there, breathing and contemplating on the fact that I was so productive today. This is the second beautiful course of the day. So, um, 10 seconds. And uh, yeah, I've been playing around with some blues, some browns, some greens. And the break is over. I'm going to set a timer for 20 minutes starting now. Okay, now. Okay, now that you have your brush clean, let's actually clean it a bit more just so it doesn't have any blue inside of it. Even though the water is a bit blue, it doesn't really matter. You will need to put some white paint in an area that is dry, like for instance here next to the yellow. It's important to be close to the yellow and have some space to play around with the white. It's going to be some white, some yellow. That's too much yellow. Let's take some more white. Even though the paint the green on the inside is not really dry. You can still pick up some of that, that white because it's enough color to make it nice. So that's just about it. That's the color. It's a very, very light yellow. And you're going to start right over this blue and make some beautiful shapes. This is not the finishing color. Uh, don't worry and add it a bit more to the bottom creating some edges try to make them not very fluffy this is not a fluffy painting make them straight but not entirely fluffy clean up the brush even though it has some blue that's fine can even go pollute I cannot say that word you can go add it towards this area as well. Let's go over this blue. Don't worry if it's a bit transparent. You're going to fix it later. And start adding some of this color onto the clouds. The white areas that you left. Okay. And once you do that, you can take some more white this time focusing on the left side of the clouds, on the top left side, notice how it's much more light. But because you have the yellow underneath, 
you also can blend them very well. Now it's time to really fill in those areas and then focus on the edges later in the next lightest color. Okay, let's take some more white, blend it over the yellow, over here. You can also add another bridge just like that and press down to add some of that blue on the bottom. In case you don't have the blue, you can just take some of this turquoise or blue and add it at the bottom just so it creates a bit of a softer edge on the bottom side of the clouds so it's not so harsh. Just taking some more just to add it right underneath the clouds and just a touch is enough to blend those clouds together. Now taking some more white very very carefully touching the red with the corner notice how small it is it's tiny and I'm still gonna take it away and put it next to it so that this beautiful pink is not too intense slowly add a bit more well let's actually paint with this first it's just a small hue variation don't be afraid to put thick paint it makes your paintings look more luxurious Okay, going on the edge and over here. On the top side, notice how this color stands out a bit more than the... It's not only because of the white, it's also because of the tiny, tiniest amount of red. If you can notice the red, then it's not good. You shouldn't be able to notice it. It should feel as if it's a lighter color and going underneath and on the left side over here maybe adding some more clouds on this side just going in because they are not really connected the areas are this area is a bit stunted it hasn't grown properly okay making the white lines a bit more disappear taking some white I accidentally took some blue but that's fine for this area is completely fine adding some finer lines notice how they blend so well together with the purple just small beautiful lines smaller and smaller long and beautiful and taking some more white Okay, adding it to the left of the clouds over on this side and maybe on here. Blending some of that color, not too much. Keep them a bit separate and adding some more runaways around the other clouds. These are the most important parts of the clouds. They just give them that fluffiness because you are, they are broken by the wind, just like I am. <laughs> I'm broken by the wind because it is cold the cold wind of the summer <laughs> okay notice how this beautiful line has been created let's actually accentuate another beautiful small one this is just playing with big medium small you are just playing with bigger shapes and then smaller shapes and then even smaller shapes just to break things break the monotony of the whole cloud i'm adding another highlight on top of this because it was too yellow and don't blend everything together don't feel the need to blend everything together let's take some red on the corner as always just a touch of red it's too much so we need more white, more white, and some yellow, too much yellow. These colors need to be so white and so beautiful 
Okay, and going over the clouds with this beautiful pink, let it get blend a bit with the yellows. Notice how beautiful it becomes. Just adding it over. Don't worry too much about the placement. This is just to add some of that color variety. Okay, and after a big stretch, I'm gonna do some lines on the bottom, maybe a few dabs as well. Just a few dabs and then a line, a few more dabs and then a line, maybe that line is too big. You can go over with a finger to blend the whole thing over the blue. And over on this side, a few lines. Now with this pink, let's start creating some, on this area, some beautiful patches of color. Just cleaning up the brush and creating some of this interesting reflection. Maybe it's a reflection, maybe it's just grass or some patch of sand or something else. Now take some yellow, too much yellow. Let's add some more white in the corner over here. I touched a bit of red, that's fine. And let's add it. Notice how it is more yellow and it really shines. And let's add it to the clouds over the pink a bit and under the clouds. Maybe connecting these two this is a very, should have broken up this cloud a bit more, but that's fine. The more we know, the more we learn. The more we do, the more we learn. Taking some more paint and focusing on this area, leaving some of the other colors. Notice how these colors have a very beautiful life on this pasture because they have that brown so it's not so distant in terms of on the color wheel. Taking some more yellow this time. Now it's good to have a lot of yellow. Well, not a lot, but as you can see, to bring back, to bring the bridge closer towards the, let's take some water and some more yellow. To, bl to blend in and bring the bridge closer towards the green, the, the green, the Grinch, <laughs> the green, and just creating a beautiful color. Notice that the yellows usually are very transparent. So we are playing with that. But if you wanted a very opaque yellow, you'll need to do a few passes over. Okay. Maybe some textures over on this side and some of them on here. Let's take some more yellow. This time only the only yellow. There is a bit of white in the brush and create some a few patches. Just slowly inching your way towards the greens. But because yellow is a transparent color, you don't even need to recreate those greens. Let's also try to make some lines over the white. Let's take some white. This time it's important that with the yellow that you have, blend it together and it's important to build some texture. You've played only with small amounts of texture. Now take more of this color, more of the white and just lay over it to build some texture. Just put your brush on the side and let it do abstract shapes over, especially over the yellow, the intense yellow sides. Notice how beautiful it is. If you don't have enough textures, take more of this white and put it over and blend it over. You don't have to blend it actually. So going on to the left, Okay, now taking just a touch of red on the corner, maybe that's too much, and making a beautiful pink 
with some yellow or orangey rosy pink this will be such a beautiful color let's first add it as a texture over this yellow and then put it in some areas notice how much more warm and beautiful the painting looks immediately after you put this yellow pink over it in fact this rosy pink is so beautiful that you might as well just add it to the clouds creating some more cuts notice how these are not blended they are very they are like the mountains like you created the mountains and don't go to the edge of the cloud just focus a bit on the middle lower side especially on the right middle lower side you can go a bit higher if you want but these are not blended yes so it's a beautiful color and it's going to dry a bit darker as well because acrylic dries a bit dark okay and underneath here notice how much more beautiful this color is this rosy pink that it made the clouds so much more interesting i picked up a bit more of the edge of the pink just because it was a bit more interesting not too much we don't want to overpower the whole painting and now let's clean up the brush the sky is done we're not going to touch it if you want and you have to change it a bit you can go back with some white just take some white and add a few more textures on top you can do this exact thing just straight up white and add it add it over it really creates a bit of texture because they are a bit but just on the middle one just so it's more interesting okay once you do you've done that you need to go back to the greens so yellow blue and a bit of brown because you've played with very light colors now you need some darker colors this beautiful earthy green and then at the end just some very intense green after everything has dried notice the shadows notice how it just goes nicely and as always if you go close to a lighter patch of color it will create more contrast that's the secret sauce of contrast the nobody will tell you this secret diet i'm joking just creating some more lines just so we are focusing also on areas that are exposed that have white canvas we don't want the white canvas showing so that's a e an easy way to add abstraction and composition let the painting dictate where you put the actual paint if you took some white just like i did just now don't worry about it just go and spin the brush and just paint in other areas it's going to be fine now taking some more yellow and adding it over this earthy tone just so we can come closer towards the green let's add some textures by dabbing notice that it's making this mess just dabbing maybe with the corner of the brush and then blending them with the corner of the brush a bit and then adding some more blending some more at the bottom of the texture because things don't usually have textures as they go down in the ground they have only on top think of them as beautiful grass taking some more yellow adding it on top getting closer towards the colors you've put the yellows and the white of the clouds that you've put on on the bottom this is way too intense so let's cut it over 
this color is so beautiful and you're gonna need to use it a bit more in case you already got it. It's just a simple green that looks gorgeous. This will need to have some more lines on top with a lighter color, with a lighter green or some other beautiful colors. Okay, and over on this side a bit more, let's take a look and see if there are some whites covering all the whites of the canvas, covering the canvas colors. Over here, there is a big one big area and in this corner, maybe on the edge. Okay, let's add a tiny bit of white to that to finish the whole thing to get so very close to the color. Notice how close it is. And you've built a family of colors. Let's add a big flat color over here and another one here. And continue this line a bit more onto the right by taking some white and blending it into the green. Doing the same over here just to make a, this a bit more rounded out, a bit more of a line. Let's take some yellow and place it over the white that you just placed over here just to create that same kind of interaction. Getting some white over and putting it over the yellow. And since you have this new found color, you can go and add it with small lines at the top. Just a few to fix this area over here. Maybe this is a lake kind of situation or we don't know. It's a like a lake that is almost drying out and it shines the whole sky over. Let's take a break and go over the painting once again at the end for the finishing touches. And let's go over the painting once again at the end for a few finishing touches. It's almost there, it needs just a few more colors. And there you go. The last session is over. I'm going to put two minutes in case you need another session of 20 minutes. You can add your own timer or watch one of my other videos. It's been a crazy experience to paint this beautiful landscape. It's so beautiful. I love it. And I'm going to finish it in about 10 minutes and then Go and take a break and meet with a friend who's going to edit these courses. And it's going to be so fun to actually have the most productive time of my year. Not year, but year. 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 <laughs> I cannot English. I talked so much today. I have like two hours of recording just what I say on the course and also these kinds of recordings. Just a beautiful experience. My house is a mess and I'm having a lot of fun. Sophie's waiting for her meal. I'm waiting for my meal as well because I haven't eaten yet anything yet. I'm gonna eat at 8 o'clock. It's 8 15, 15 minutes after <laughs> my beautiful feeding time. I'm gonna put some chicken legs, some chicken knees on the in the air fryer and have some the juice I'm gonna give to Sophie and I'm gonna have the chicken legs. I have some uh, small flatbread and I'm gonna make some rollies. Some rollies. Mmm, I cannot wait. Or maybe, no. I, I was going to say I'm going to go buy something, but no, I have like 10 chicken legs in the fridge. 
waiting to be done. The break is over and I'm actually, this time I'm actually gonna stop the video right here because I am a bit tired from all of this huge light and talking so much. So I'm just gonna stop it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.